Welcome to another edition of the official Jets podcast. We have Matt Willig on this edition, a little bit of a different episode. And you might be thinking that name sounds a little familiar. Well, Willig played with the Jets 93 to 95. Now he's an actor. Most recently, he plays Andre the Giant on Young Rock. You know, it's kind of ironic because I believe WrestleMania and WrestleMania 37 just happened over the weekend. And when I grew up, I was a huge wrestling fan. Those were the days of Hulk Hogan and Roddy Roddy Piper and the Iron Sheik and Junkyard Dog. And Willig, who played offensive lineman for the Jets from 93 to 95, plays Andre the Giant uh, in this show. I've been able to see clips, uh, very impressive, but I have not seen the series from start to finish you know i was also a wrestling fan growing up um one time my parents tried to punish me by not letting me watch rest like friday night smackdown I, I was pretty that i was like my punishment well i go back to the days when wrestling really hit the mainstream saturday night's main event like saturday night live we know that spot has been nbc for forever right but Wrestling got so big that they used to have something called Saturday Night's Main Event, where it would happen a, a couple times a year, where it would take the place of Saturday Night's Live. Saturday well, Night Live. I went as Rey Mysterio once as Halloween, like with the mask. I was I I have the John Cena U.S. World Champion spinning belt, not the WWE Champion, the the U.S. World Champion belt. That I was that was a birthday gift one year. Yeah, and now Willick was not a huge wrestling fan growing up, but he took that part very seriously, and it was fun uh, catching up with him to see the lengths he went to to portray Andre the Giant. Yeah, let, let's just let's not spoil anything. Let's just get right into it. Let's hear from Matt Willick. Matt, how do you consider that? This has come full circle for you, considering that early on in your career, you did a lot of radio spots. You got comfortable being in front of the microphone, doing stuff in front of the camera. Did you think it was going to be a natural transition down the line for you? That's a great start, and you're absolutely right. I mean, 1990, I started in 92, uh, as a, but you know, I spent four years there. By the part, time I got done with my four years, that's where I kind of started doing some radio programs, uh, some O-line uh, stuff. Uh, Jeff Criswell is a name some people might remember. He kind of got me into it. And this is where I first sort of just got comfortable in front of the camera, whether it was just, uh, you know, there was audio, uh, you know, on the radio or, or, or some, doing some tele televised thing. But yeah, it was my first sort of uh, af getting after uh, seeing that I could do it. And uh, I was nervous as hell when I first started doing it, not knowing how to really you know, talk and all that stuff. As I'm doing now, I sound horrible now. But anyway, uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun being a California kid, going to New York, and um, you know, wide-eyed and just trying to figure it all out. But uh, but New York is where I first learned it. All right. Well, you know, th there's a thousand things that we're going to ask you, but as someone went to USC, you have ties in California. Mm -hmm. You spent time right. on the East Coast. I, I got a couple questions. You know, just which coast <laughs> do you like better? Right. First off, sure. second, Shake Shack or In and Out? <laughs> That's a oh, those are great questions. Well, I got to be honest. I, yeah, I'm a Southern California kid, and uh, and I always will be, especially in this uh, day and age when everyone's uh, trying to get the hell out of California. Uh, it's really hard for me to leave. I, I love the West Coast. Um, I, I'm a I'm a Sun Beach guy, and I've always been that way. Not that I didn't enjoy my times at Jones Beach and hanging out on the <laughs> island. Um, and, and back in 92, let me tell you, there was some hairspray going on. So it was a whole new experience for me, but so, so definitely West coast, you know, I have a lot of respect for East coasters and, what? uh, go ahead. In, in and out. In and out. It's gotta be my first. Yeah. I was yeah. Gonna say. yeah. In, well, in yeah out. It, it'd be a problem if you said shake shack and you're born and raised on the West coast. So I could, it, I could it, say that'd be an castle. issue. I could, yeah, I could say White Castle and throw you guys for a loop, but, uh, but it starts with <laughs> in and out. It starts okay. with in and out. Hey, Matt, so five years ago, you said, you know it's hard. You try to climb the ladder, but I'm getting older. I'm reaching 50 in a couple of years, and you never know how long this will go on. My goal is to work for a good five more years to maintain the success, have some good roles, and then kind of ride off into the sunset. You're not riding off into the sunset. No. 
I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm holding on for dear life. <laughs> Listen, that, that, those are things you say, you know, I mean, look at, I, I do have a plan that, that sort of, I don't want to be doing, you know, working forever, so to speak. I've been blessed to have now two solid careers, um, that have been unbelievable to me. And, and I think once the, my, my youngest daughter is kind of a freshman in high school, and I think once she gets on and graduates and kind of gets into college, that'll kind of leave me some time to be able to travel and do some things. But again, those, you know, I mean, uh, if the roles keep coming and, and, and things uh, successfully keep sort of, uh, you know, I, I call it uh, climbing the ladder of, 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 of success with, with um, the entertainment world. If that keeps happening, there's no question I'll keep going. But again, I don't want to be a guy who's, uh, at six foot seven playing the 60 year old ex big, you know, big guy who's, who's been knocked around the head too many times, but I'm really enjoying uh, what I'm doing now with young rock to have such an iconic role, you know, as Andre, the giant has been an amazing sort of turn of events for me. Were you a wrestling fr- uh, fan growing up? Uh, did, did you love Andre, the giant? You know, it was that was one of those things where I said, "Do I lie about this or not?" But um, early on, <laughs> no, I I was not a wrestling fan. I really wasn't. Now, did I know of Andre the Giant? Absolutely. Did I know of the of the famous guys, the Hulk Hogan's, even the Iron Sheiks and those guys back in the day? Yes. But I, I'm one of six boys, so just to even get to be able to watch TV. <laughs> back in the day was something that we that we clawed and scratched for and i'm the fifth of six so i i rarely got to watch what i wanted so uh wrestling was not on the on the on the uh on the map for us as, as kids so i never really enjoyed it never really got into it it's funny because i got several friends around me uh who were diehards you know could tell me everything from, from the 70s to the 80s on up um, it just wasn't me. So even though I had a, a great respect for those guys and uh, and knew of them as sort of celebrity types or people on TV, I never was really a fan. You know, Matt, you talked about starting, you know, like when you're in the NFL and you do, you, you make the transition. Was there anything that you found, let's say, helpful while playing football that is helping you now that you didn't necessarily know? Like, I'll give you an example for me in the job that I have now, I grew up taking theater classes and that has in Mm -hmm. in turn helped me now. Right. Well, you know, it has to be sort of in your DNA and you have to sort of have that itch, you know, to, to, to be on camera even, you know, and want to do that, to put yourself out there. And I had that already. So I had that sort of personality, but there was no question that I needed help along the way. But getting back to your question, um, you know, football with just discipline and, you know, being a, a part of a team. I, my role through the NFL years was sometimes starter, sometimes backup, you know, and not just a backup, but backup several positions. So that became my sort of niche. You know, I knew that, number one, I was going to be a character actor. Number two, I needed to find sort of my placement in everything. So, yeah, that's a long way to say yes. You know, having the discipline um, to study having discipline to know your lines, um, being, fitting yourself in as part of the, um, in in a TV series or or a movie, all those things kind of are things that I had been doing all my life, you know? So um, that and rejection, you know, for me playing for six teams in 14 years, there was definitely some, some rejection going on there. And so I moved from one of the highest rejection rates to I think the highest rejection rate um, in the entertainment field. And uh, so those things sort of just, it's one of those things that just, you keep your head down, you try and learn as much as possible and, and you get better as you go on. And that was sort of the same thing that happened with me in the NFL. You were a Rose bowl champion with USC back in 1989. You eventually got a super bowl ring as well. You played with the jets Atlanta Falcons, Green Bay Packers, St. Louis Rams, San Francisco 49ers, Carolina Panthers. And then you circle back with the Rams again. Uh, yeah. Unbelievable. Did you ever think when you started out with the Jets in the early 90s that you would play for that long? And what kept you going in terms of the average career, as you know so well, is just over yeah. three years? Yeah. It, you know, it, it was – um it just was one of those things where I just said, why not me? Now, did I think I would play over 10 years? Absolutely not. But I had this sort of dumb arrogance that, 
that I just thought somehow I would make it. Now, my story with the Jets is is pretty crazy because I came in as a defensive lineman, a defensive end. I was playing in the days of uh, Jeff Lagerman and Dennis Bird and Marvin Washington and, and guys like that. And um, I knew I was too slow to play in the NFL. But again, I just thought if I worked hard enough, something would happen. And sure enough, one day late in training camp, my rookie year, I got pulled over after practice and, and the O-line coach said, hey, we want to work on you with some drills, O-line drills. And based off that minute sort of audition, <laughs> to use the word that I use now, um, they called me in. Bruce Kozak calls me in at the end of training camp and says, hey, I want you to go home to L.A., uh, gather your stuff. We're going to bring you back on the practice squad, and we're going to put you on as an O-lineman and see how it goes. And there was a part of me that just was not overly surprised by it. You know, and, and that, again, that's just sort of that sort of um, – head in the clouds, maybe. It wasn't arrogance. I just thought if I worked hard enough, something would happen. And and it did. And that sort of catapulted me. You know, I worked with a guy named Larry Bechtel, who was a, a tactician as an offensive line coach, and that really helped. And, and that was immense to kind of getting me to be a good O-lineman and be able to last uh, as long as I did. So that was sort of the transition. And, and uh, you know, I didn't think it was – I didn't know it was going to happen, but I just had a feeling that somehow I would sort of force my way in. You know, I know we keep going back and forth between football and acting, but that's what we're going to keep doing. Yeah. You so I'm going to pep, I'm going to pepper you with a, an acting question. Go. Cool. What What do you like most about acting or being on camera? It's every bit of it for me is a challenge. Um, it, it, it it's getting easier, and there are certain things that are easier than others, but. Um, you know, it, it's just I can be playing a thug over here one day and then the next day I'm doing Andre the Giant and the next day I'm trying to ca- cry on camera and the next time I'm grabbing a guy and throwing him with some stunts or we're doing a fight. It's just that back and forth of uh, what you can do in this business and what I be blessed on the fact that uh, based on the fact that, I, that I'm big and I have the physical stature that I'm able to do those things. So it's that back and forth. I think every actor will say, you know, I, I love doing comedies, but then I love over, coming over here and doing, uh, you know, something serious or a drama. It's that sort of keeping you on your toes that at any moment I could be auditioning for something like a young rock with Andre the Giant, or I could be doing something, you know, where I'm putting prosthetics on with Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and and, and dressing up as a character called Lash. You know, it's that sort of back and forth that just really, really does it for me you know it, it keeps my brain active in a world where i i am concerned about uh my brain as i as i age uh you know i i fully am aware that keeping my brain active and and working on you know scripts and and dialogue and things like all those things keep me healthier than i than i um would be if i wasn't doing that You've been in more than 20 movies and I think close to 30 TV shows now. Is there a character that you most related to personally? Because part of acting is you got to dive into somebody else's shoes. But along the way, was there a character or two where you said, well, this is most like Matt Willick? Yeah, that's that's, that's a great question. Right off the bat, my initial reaction is playing Justin Strelzik excuse me in the movie concussion with will smith and um you know i i could very easily relate to uh obviously he was an o-lineman uh going through the trials and tribulations of the nfl uh playing with a hurt body all those things that he sort of went through in real life and struggles that you know i i have come to know i was a roommate with junior seau um that just recently in the last year did a story on the usc linebackers when i played at usc We've lost about five different guys, um, a couple of them to uh, suicide, you know, based on them having, you know, signs of CTE. So uh, that hit home with me. Um, And and in doing the preparation for concussion, I was able to meet Justin's widow and his family. Um, And just that, that really was something that was really personal to me and something that I really related to. So that's kind of my number one answer. You know, Matt, oftentimes in the NFL, you know, players have a moment where they realize, you know what, I, I belong here. I can stick around for a little while. What was that moment for you in acting if there was one? That's that's another good question. Um, 
it's it's little things you know i don't mean to try to sound sort of so actory <laughs> but it is <laughs> it, it, it is little things because there's so it's a lot of times there's so little acknowledgement or recognition you know this has been weird for me with with young rock that i've gotten some recognition it's the kind of the first time in you know a 15 year career um so it's little things it's having an actor like malcolm mcdowell when i was in a movie with him um who's you know amazing and in him say that he didn't even wasn't even aware i was an, an ex-athlete because he thought he just was impressed with my acting ability and then when asked you know about my acting or my, my athletic career he had no idea little things like that where you just get recognition or you know i mean being able to cry the first time on 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 a in a scene and little things like that where you just go yeah i'm a little bit closer you know um getting on uh what else god i'm trying to think um isn't that kind of like the nfl though like what separates people that don't make it and do is the little things oh there's i'm one thousand percent you know i t- i tell people all the time i i was so not the most athletic person <laughs> and i had seen guys way more talented than me um come and come in and 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 get bounced quicker than than they should have because they just weren't either being a pro and you guys i'm sure know what that means or just having the the ability to learn your plays and and be the guy who knows what he's doing all the time and that sort of became my mo you know um i was a good rah-rah guy i was a good inspirational guy but i i knew how to be a pro and how to come in and know what I was supposed to do. And, and, you know, and playing for six teams, that was always tough. You know, you come in and as a veteran, you've gone through six different systems and then you come into another one and you got to learn that as quickly as possible. Otherwise you get bounced. So, so yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's amazing that, that, um, that someone with my slow uh, ability <laughs> ability as an offensive lineman was able to play as long as I did. You got a lot of humility for a guy who won a Rose Bowl, went to USC, <laughs> played in the league for that long, has been in all, all these shows and movies. Um, what don't we know about Dwayne Johnson, The Rock, and how did this come to be? Because I think I heard a story, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, that you were in the weight room one day and you actually approached The Rock? We we uh, back uh, probably over over a decade ago about a, yeah over a decade ago we were working out in the same gym. It was an Equinox gym out here in L.A. And um, you know he hadn't reached. Obviously he was he was an actor already and doing well, but you know he was still working out publicly <laughs> before he had his <laughs> before he had his Iron Paradise going on. So yeah, um, we befriended each other just a little bit in the gym. I think he sort of felt comfortable with me that I wasn't going to, you know, ooh and awe over him. And, uh, and, you know, we just worked out a few times and I had my first big movie coming out year one with Jack Black. And so there was some things that I kind of was still unaware of and how do I do this and how do I promote myself? And so I had, I, I pulled him aside one day and asked and asked him about that and, and uh, got sought, sought some advice from him. And he was, he was more than cool. And he was just so down to earth and sort of uh, open to to helping me and giving me some advice and and you know then he sort of kind of and, and after a couple of months and he was gone out of the picture but it was that that was like from then on I wanted to be in a movie or something with him and and I had tried for several years uh, to get on something with him and so when this came about uh you know he even remarked he was like i'm so glad we get to work together finally you know because he had known that i was trying to get get with him for a while but uh you know getting back to the original how this happened i i it came on an audition that i had literally less than 24 hours to to prepare for i had to have sort of the accent you know and there was even some french dialogue in it and uh in less than 24 hours i went in sometimes that's the best way to do it you know you go in and you don't have a ton of time to think about it you just go and and i went in and i knew i had sort of the stature a little bit and and i went in and met with the uh the co-creator uh and and the writer of the show the notch Khan, and immediately i I could just you know sometimes you go into an audition you just know right away if it's if it's working and and i could feel that it was uh to the point where afterwards she even asked me she goes do you speak french because i had done a pretty good job at it and I said, no, but I'm learning, you know, one of those things, you know, 
that was that was where my cockiness came out. <laughs> you're and, you're uh, a big dude. You're a big dude, though. How difficult was it to put on those thirty to thirty five pounds? That's how seriously you took this role. Yeah, it, it, I knew it was important. I really knew it was important to kind of have that shape. I, I'm not going to be seven foot four or whatever he was, even if he was seven foot. I wasn't going to be that tall and have that sort of stature. But I knew if I had sort of the look and the body that that it would it would come off pretty good and uh i put it on slowly sort of in like 10 pound increments and uh but i tell you what yeah once the 30 to 35 hit when i was over in australia um it, it, there was moments where i just said boy uh as a 50 year old guy i should not be doing this <laughs> you know it's one thing to go from like what's one thing to go from like 200 to 230 you know that's that's even i'm sure hard for that person but to be over 50 years old and being the kind of that I, I usually carry around 290, which even on my six, seven frame is, is, is pretty uh, athletic, I guess, but to put on 35 pounds, um, you know, by the time I was done shooting, I was, I, I came home immediately and lost like 15 in the first two weeks. You know, I, I wanted to get off and, you know, God willing, I'm knocking on wood that uh, we get to go back and, and, and do a season two and, and I'll put a little bit back on. <laughs> Hey man, being in Australia sounds pretty nice right now. It was kind of a cold winter up here. I don't know if you know about that. I'm telling you guys, I couldn't have been more happy with Australia. Um, it was tough being away from my my my, my girls for uh, several months, but Australia was a bucket list for me. It has been for a while that I hadn't been to, and uh, even though it was a pain in the butt to get to, and uh, do quarantine, we had to quarantine for two weeks straight. Couldn't leave the room in a hotel. But once we got out, we were free and, and there was no, there was, you know, they were in such a bubble that uh, there was no um, fear of COVID. And, and so once you were out, there were no masks, there was, there was nothing to restrict you. So it was just a lot of fun. And over there was their summertime. So again, we just had a blast and, and, uh, you know, it was one of those projects where you go and because you're all in this little, you know, new little area together, guys a couple of guys came from New Zealand and all parts of uh, the United States. Young Dewey, who's playing the 10 year old Dewey came from uh, Canada. And so there was all these all these people from around and we just bonded really well. It was one of those projects where you go, this feels like it should, uh, as far as just being together, everybody going to dinner, working out together, all these things that kind of made it a really cool experience. What's a Hollywood premiere like? And also, are you just dad at home? I love the shirt, girl, dad. Uh, you know, I, I want to get one of those myself. You have the two daughters. Do they ever, yeah. do they always keep you in check or they think it's kind of cool sometimes when you guys go out to Hollywood a little bit? You know, is that there was an initial when they were really young and I was doing a lot of the kids uh, shows, the Disney and the, um, uh, what's the other one? Uh, yeah, the, the, the Disney shows anyways, and I was doing those. And so there was a little bit of real pride in the girls because they would say, yeah, that's my dad on TV because all the kids were watching him. Uh, it was funny because I used to have parents come up to me and go, if I have to hear your name one more time, there's Mr. Willick on TV. Or like, I'm going to I'm going to kill my kid. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so, yeah, but nowadays my kids, you know, they really enjoy the fact that I'm on this show. But for the most part, they're it's they're they're not faced by it you know they're like oh dad do you die again in this one no which is <laughs> <laughs> what happens to me 95 percent of the time they expect me to die as some kind of bad guy or something all right well matt you know i have one final question for you and you know I, I we could talk to you for hours but with that being said you mentioned australia being a bucket list item you played in the nfl ea was talking about you want a rose bowl you want a super bowl you're acting What's next? Like, what what are some bucket list items in terms of acting that you want to do? And, you know, also, do you have just any random bucket list items you want to do that doesn't even involve acting? Tell you what, man, you guys are going deep on me here. I'm not sure how to answer these type of questions. Um, <laughs> you no, take it wherever the, you it, want to. <laughs> right, right, exactly. It's not scripted. <laughs> uh, those are good questions. So, I mean, obviously, you know, for me as an actor, all I really want to do is work. And, and people say that, and especially nowadays with COVID and the world that's gone on in the last year, um, the acting jobs are so few and far between. And it already is for someone like me as a, as a big man. So, you know, I think just continuing to work, um, getting some good things, getting a chance. Every rung that you kind of go up is a chance to 
to get some more acting gigs and things that you really want to do, whether that's just for me, I really want to be in a big action movie. I want to, I want to hold a, a huge gun and I want to run around and shoot it. That's one of the, that's one of the goals. And the other one is to kind of have something where it's real good dialogue, where I can play a big man who has a heart or a big man who, you know, who, who, who's got some, some depth to him. That's always the key because that's who I am. You know, I'm, I'm more than just, People that know me say, God, I, I wouldn't even know you played football if I didn't know you played football. Um, I, I'm not a big talker of sports. So, again, just to keep acting. Um, you know, uh, personally, man, I just getting the kid. My, I got a senior in high school, you know, getting her squared away and getting her into college and, and getting the next one squared away in a couple of years is really important to me. Uh, being a good dad is important. I, I tend to. I tend to overcoach my girls and they, they laugh at that a lot, but I think it's, it's, it's better than not, you know? Um, and, and, and I'd like to travel. Uh, finally, I'd like to get, get, get around and I haven't been to Europe, but I haven't traveled a lot, uh, which is amazing because I've had opportunities. I just haven't taken advantage of them. And so as I've gotten older, I really, really do want to travel. I want to go back to Australia um, and spend some time. Uh, I'd like to go to Europe and spend some time. I want to go back to Germany, which is some of my heritage. Um, I want to go to the Middle East a little bit. And just, so, so traveling is definitely on, on, the, on the bucket list of things that do coming up. The NFL draft is coming up. What are your memories of the draft 1993? And, and do, you share, um, do you share a special bond with guys in the National Football League who go on draft it and make it? Uh, because – we often spend a lot of time here talking about the first round pick, the guys who are in the yeah. top five or maybe day two or whatever. But there are a lot of guys who are drafted either late or they're not drafted right. at all. And they make up the national football league. Those are the diamonds in the rough. Those are the guys that will that'll, that'll win you championships. I believe um, you need your star athletes. You need your guys, you need your number ones, but it, I think it's those guys that come later on, on day two or even day four, you know, um, where, where you make up the team, make up a difference. Draft day for me was, uh, again, guys, you, you know, it's that, it's that blinders on where I thought, you know, someone's going to pick me up. You know, I had a medium career at USC, you know, and, and I just thought someone's going to pick me up. And that came and went. And, um, and, and, and I'll tell you another story. Uh, there was a guy named Dale Gross who had actually worked with the Jets. And he had then come back to USC and he was uh, working at, at, at the USC Athletics. And he made a call for me. Um, he made a call to, uh, to a couple of the guys in the front office and said, hey, take a chance on Matt. He is a guy, if nothing else, he'll work his ass off for you. And, uh, it'd be a good, and, and he put it plain and simple. He said, it'll be a good, a good camp body. So he'll bust his ass for you. You know, he's that kind of guy. And so that's what I remember being on the phone with him saying, he said, Hey man, I gave a good word for you and don't disappoint me. And so we even talked to this day um, about how I, I <laughs> that he owes me now because I've, I've given him such uh, good props for making the good choice. So uh, it, it was a scary time. I didn't even know if I really wanted to play ball. I got out to New York and I was a scared, scared kid. Um, I, I just didn't think I was going to have what it took to make it. Um, so it, it was a scary time for me. And uh, But every year, or you know, I always do have a kinship. Even when we look at, you know, like a guy like Wayne Corbett who came in a couple mm -hmm. of years after me and you know, who the Jets fans would know a lot of. And there's always a couple of guys that I kind of, uh, you know, you give the little nod to of, hey, man, I know what that feels like. Was there a favorite memory for you between 93 and 95? You mentioned Jones Beach. Maybe it's yeah. where you lived. Maybe it's a night on the town. Maybe it's a locker room story that you can talk about. There, There's a ton of them. You know, anybody who goes to their first team, there are the memories are so you know vivid, and it's always the first experience with everything. I remember going out to New York and just going, this is a whole different world, you know, this East Coast. Um I remember everybody in the front office being, you know, just so cool. I have had relationships with the PR people and just everybody seemed to be a little more personable than it came later on. You know, it's such a business now and, and there's great relationships to be had everywhere. But I just remember the faces. Uh, um, I, I remember older guys like Jim Sweeney and, uh, and, and Freeman McNeil. Al Toon was there my freshman year. Uh, Kenny O'Brien. These are guys that, you know, they were at the tail end of their careers. 
And to, for me to sit in the locker room and look at these guys, guys that I had seen growing up, what a trip, you know, I mean, what a, what a, what a moment just to sit and kind of take it all in. Uh, the equipment guys were characters. I remember those guys all the time. There was a guy named Mickey Rendine, who mm-hmm. was a locker room guy who went back and forth between the Yankees, I think, and, and, and the Jets. And he was probably in his 70s, and he was a character. Guys like that, you know. Uh, um, it, it, there's a ton of memories. Um, I remember Pete Carroll being a defensive coordinator um, and and taking us all bowling. Uh, he had a bowling night every uh, every camp that we we did, and that's when they said they thought I would be a good player because I had really good bend in my knees. <laughs> <laughs> Pat, <laughs> Pat Kerwin was the guy who took me under his wing. I don't know if you guys know who that, yep. that is. Um, used to work with the Jets and and is still obviously very involved in the NFL. But um, he was a guy that that really believed in me, and he 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 does. He tells the story. He goes, "When I saw you bowl." and be able to bend your knees and get some flexion because that's when I told all the guys uh, that you were going to be a player because you had that ability to do that. And so things like that, I remember, um, you know, I remember Richie Kotite came in uh, my, well, my last year in the Jets and I just, I, I never met a coach that I wanted to hurt so bad in my life. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I, I, that, he used to play mind games uh, with me that I just, I, it, it's, it used to drive me insane. Um, but yeah, there's just a ton of memories and, uh, and, and then obviously trying to finally trying to get into New York and, and experience that whole city. And I did fall in love with New York and, and being in the city and being able to do th- anything you wanted until five in the morning. And it was just, it was just a, a great to be there. And um, I really still look fondly back on, on my years there in New York. Yeah. I got to know what, what's your best bowling score? I'm just curious. You know, you, you mentioned no, it. I used, I used to be a really good bowler. I was, I was, I was in between, I was right around 250 for a while. Wow. You know, I was, wow. I wasn't the 300, I wasn't the 300 bowler, but I was bowling over 200 every, every game. And I was right around 250. So I was a pretty solid bowler. And that was without a, I was just a brute too. I was, I, I didn't have the spin on it. I was just, I picked the I picked the lane and threw it as hard as I could. Uh, okay, uh, so let's get to this one then. Let's go back to the gym. You and the Rock. What do you wear in the yeah. gym? You doing a t-shirt or you doing a tank top? And what was what does the Rock go with? That's that's a that's, that's a good question. I typically like to start with a uh, t-shirt over a tank. Okay. And I like to I like to kind of get the warm up going and get a little, small little sweat going before I you know, very slyly remove the shirt and show off the guns. Um, hell, I don't know what Dwayne was wearing. I'm sure he was wearing something really, 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 really tight. <laughs> and as, and as, li- as little fabric as possible. Um, that's been his MO for a long time. But, you know, it, it's funny that, uh, that being able to, and this has been, I've met a lot of what you call, stars in the world uh whether it be athletes or in the entertainment field and i've just never been there have been very 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 few instances where i've been in awe or you know for a lack of words to to speak to someone and um and Dwayne was just easy you know Dwayne was easy he he was a really cool guy um he he comes off sometimes people have this idea that he's too perfect but i just think he's so genuine and so driven um as someone who wants it all he really does um and he works ass off and that was evident just seeing the gym keeping his head down sweating his ass off working hard um and you know it, he he left me he wasn't able to be in in, in australia when we were shooting because he shot all his things in in the states because uh, he's by himself but he made sure he was available for us at any point and so i reached out to him and really wanted to know the the uh the real relationship between Andre and, and Dwayne as a kid. And so he just left me this 15 minute uh, uh, message to me and he got that on purpose. He said, I wanted to leave you this because I want you to have it. And I want you to you know look back on it. I'm sorry. I couldn't be able to talk to you in person, but he left me a, a, a beautiful 15 minute message where if I had bothered him during the, during the call, you know, and asked him questions, he would have kind of gone off on something else, but he was able to talk and to have this great passionate speech and passionate talk about what it meant to him, what the show meant to him, what the relationship that Andre had with him meant. It was really the last thing that I needed to be able to kind of get into shooting and kind of have that and have that feel kind of going in. So 
you know, he's the best, and I'm pretty fortunate to be part of uh, what he's got going on right now. Well, we're looking forward to watching what's in store uh, coming up for you. Uh, one Thank of my you. favorites, one one of my favorite roles for you was in uh, We're the Millers. I we're the Millers. Were oh, yeah. Well, I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> That was that was another one that was a lot of fun to shoot. Um, you know, just had a blast with that one. Wearing one eye uh, the whole time was a treat in itself. But uh, working with Jennifer Aniston, uh, I told this story before. A cute story. I it was my first day working on that movie, and it was the uh, it was the her striptease scene, mm. my first scene. And as it's written in the script, she's supposed to come over to me and dance on me for a second. I mean, who could not be a little more than excited about that, something like that? So I get a knock on my trailer door about 20 minutes before I go out. And they said, hey, just so you know, we're switching it up. And um, she's not going to dance on you. And I was like, well, that's the life of an actor right there, man. Things can change in an instant, especially for someone like me. But she couldn't have been better and more sweeter about it. And um and it just had a lot of a lot of fun shooting that movie, and it was just a great, great, great movie to come out. And at the time, I think we really needed a big R movie, and it was just a lot of fun, a lot of fun to shoot. Absolutely fantastic conversation with Will again. You know, I do, I do hope he comes to the East Coast and maybe we'll hit the bowling lanes, a couple pizza joints. Yeah, I mean, if you're living in LA, you're dying to come back to New York for a little pizza. Yeah, oh, oh, yeah, for sure. I, and, and, and your question, come on. Well, you, you knew the answer. Yeah, in and out. Yeah. Yeah, I was trying to bait him. You know, <laughs> I, I, well, here's the thing. I don't think, I don't think Shake Shack is a good comparison. It's the only comparison because New York doesn't really have like a. How old is Shake Shack? Shake, Shake Shack. Shake Shack is, uh, I don't know, it's but within it's in the young. last couple of decades. Yeah, it? it's much younger than. I don't think it was here in 93 when Willick was playing. Let's put it that way. That is also true. Let's see. Shake Shack opening date let's see what comes up um i don't i don't know what <laughs> and, and hold, then, yeah oh hold on founded 2004 yeah right right uh, in and out's so, a little longer than that do you like it in out yeah i don't mind it what's your favorite fast food burger chain oh i don't really have one <laughs> okay yeah do you do you not like you, burgers you, or yeah, I like burgers, but I don't like fast food burgers. Yeah, that's fair. I, I would say In and Out. I think just like I, I like Shake Shack, but I like In and Out. I mean, a lot. I'm not going to McDonald's or Burger King. No, me neither. It, to me, the question is like, is it Five Guys? Is it? Well, Five Guys is good, solid. No, right. Okay. You know, I, I but think, In and Out. You know, that's oh, the, what a burger in Texas. Okay. I've never had that before. Never though. had it. Never had it. So, you know, it's, it's a. It's a hot, hot button. I wish I could bowl two fifty too. By the way, I, I don't. You know, I wish I could bowl over a hundred. I'm sure you could. I, I don't think I have in my lifetime, which that, is sad. That's slightly embarrassing, and yeah. I don't know. That's the first time I've actually heard you talk about acting classes before. As well. well, yeah, I, I said that, but in high school, I had the option of a second science, business, or theater, mm. and <laughs> and what did you play? Uh, I we just like did improv the entire class. That was the thing. Like we we just did improv. It wasn't like you needed to go out and act and act in a play. So I figured, you know, it sounds a little more fun than a second science, which was not even a question for me, not even considering that, or business, which was, you know, I I thought about it, but you know, what what a couple of my friends were saying, well, we heard the teacher's a really cool guy. Maybe it's an easy A. We'll do it. But so. you grew up in the city. Did you know of any famous classmates who would go on to? act um one kid a couple years older than i am you know the the commercial the bud light commercial with the poster card in the stands it's like a cardboard cutout and he yes that kid went to my high school he's oh. two years older than i am all right there you go but that that's it i think he was in on i think he was in a law and order episode but no one like went to my school for acting it was just like it was just one of the classes. I just want to know how much time Dwayne Johnson, the rock has in a day. It's, it doesn't add up to me. Yeah. I feel like, I feel like, uh, he's one of those guys that's up before the sun is up. 
and he has his routine and he just gets after it. Yeah. And you got to give Willick a lot of credit for what he did. You know, we talked about he took the undrafted route. It's not like this guy was drafted out of USC. Right. And then he was in the National Football League for more than 10 years. And then an acting career that has spanned more than 20 movies and close to 30 television shows. That's some kind of life. Yeah, I like how Willig is. He basically met Dwayne Johnson before he went huge. Right. And he was like at the Equinox gym. And Matt Willig is probably one of few people of similar to equal size as. How tall do you think The Rock is? Probably 6'4". I'll look it up. So Willig's like six seven, six eight. Right. How about going to Australia though and putting on the weight, quarantining there? Dwayne Johnson six five. Oh, okay. But even still, like if you're Dwayne Johnson, not a lot of people are taller than you and similar stature. Matt Willig probably walks up and you're like, oh, this is a big dude. Like yeah. we probably have something in common. A uh, super nice guy. I'd love to go and follow somebody like that to see what a day of shootings like in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah, I mean it's. It's similar, like as Willig pointed out, but it's also very different. And this was a fun little diversion from football. But, you know, I'm interested to see what happens next in Willig's career because, like we've talked about and illustrated, undrafted or well, Rose Bowl champion, undrafted, Super Bowl champion. He worked from the defensive line, switches to the offensive line. Now he's acting. Who knows what's next for Matt Willig? But that's all we have for this episode of the official Jets Podcast.